Yo, what is good people? Ben from Lover of Tech and we are back with another video. This time, camera comparison. Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra versus the OnePlus 12R versus the Galaxy S24 Plus. And yes, we're gonna be testing everything in terms of daylight, low light pictures, videos for the front facing camera and also the rear facing camera. So let's get to the main camera comparison when it comes to these three devices. Now the specifications for all three devices will be linked in the description below. And of course, the best way to watch this camera comparison is on the largest display possible at the highest resolution and frame rate at 4K60 with headphones on so you can hear the audio switching when watching through the videos. There will be chapters linked in the description below, but definitely get your popcorn, get your meal, get your drink and sit back and relax and watch it. It's gonna be a worthwhile one. The first section of this camera comparison is based on a the video. Then we're gonna go to photos. Let's get into it. We are now recording on a front facing camera on the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra, the OnePlus 12R, and the Galaxy S24 Plus. Here's where there's really limitations from what we're seeing. The Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra and the OnePlus 12R are limited to just 1080p 30 frames a second video recording on a front-facing camera. We can pause recording and continue on the same clip on both of them and take pictures at the same time. But as you can see with the Galaxy S24 Plus, you do have the option of 4K60. Now let's see in terms of image quality, details, colors, dynamic range, and stabilization is like. Quick run. We're still recording on the front face of the camera on the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra, OnePlus 12R, and the Galaxy S24 Plus. We've now dropped the S24 Plus to 4K 30 FPS to match in terms of the frame rate, but it still does have a high resolution compared to the other two. Let's see how the image quality is like. Details, sharpness, colors, dynamic range, and then video stabilization for quick run. We're still recording on the front facing camera on the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra, the OnePlus 12R, and the Galaxy S24 Plus. We're now in their respective video portrait mode, cinematic mode, with the background blur on the front facing camera. We're gonna be seeing some differences here. With the Galaxy S24 Plus, this does allow you to do this in 4K 30 FPS. The OnePlus 12R is limited to 1080p 30, but the option is there, but you don't have video portrait mode for the selfie camera on the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra. It is available on the rear camera, on the 1X and the 3X, but just not on the selfie. And with the Zenfone, it does do on the rear cameras by the looks of it in 4K, up to, but on the selfie, it's limited. Here's the benefit that you have with video portrait mode on a Samsung, as I've demonstrated many times, but if you're here for the first time, Here's what we run through. You can pause recording and continue on the same clip. You can't take pictures while you're recording in this mode, but you can change the different blur effects, big circle, color point, glitch. You can remove the blur altogether, go all the way to the maximum, which is seven, come back to the default, which is five. You can't do any editing after the fact. And then with the OnePlus 12R, you can do the changes before you start recording, when you're recording, you can't make any changes. You can pause recording, continue on the same clip, and you can take pictures, so that's one advantage, but you can't do any editing after the fact either. We are now recording in a 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the rear main camera on the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra, OnePlus 12R, and the Galaxy S24 Plus. Again, we're just seeing how the image quality is like. Colors, sharpness, detail, dynamic range, stabilization, of course of your favorite, quick run. Right, let's see which one allows us to do what. Ultra wide while recording on the same clip, ultra wide while recording on the same clip, and this is for the Samsung and the Asus. OnePlus 12R, again, because the ultra wide is limited to a lower resolution, there is no 4K 30 recording option for the ultra wide. We're still recording on the rear cameras. We've now switched to the ultra wide on the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra, the Galaxy S24 Plus, and the OnePlus 12R. Now the OnePlus 12R, because of the low resolution, the only way you can use the ultra wide in video is 1080p 30 FPS whereas the others can do 4K 30 and do allow you to switch between the One X and the ultra wide while recording on the same clip. Quick run. It's 
So we're in now, back to the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, the OnePlus 12R and the S24 Plus from Samsung. In this particular situation, we're in the 1X, we're gonna go to the 2X mode. And in this particular situation on the OnePlus 12R, we have to zoom in. And then press two to zoom in. So we're just in a 2X mode and we're just seeing how the image quality is like in the 2X. Let's do remember that we do have a dedicated 3X zoom on the Samsung, which we're gonna switch over to this side to have a look and see how it is when we're doing the distance zoom between these three devices. So we're gonna go to 3X on the Samsung. With the others, we do have to slowly move into 3X. And we're gonna bring it closer and pretty much have a look and see how the zoom is between the dedicated 3X and then what we have here when we're doing a zoom on the main camera sensor on the ASUS. And of course, the OnePlus 12R doesn't have a dedicated zoom lens, so it's working with a dedicated digital zoom on the main sensor. Can I come back to the main? Come back to the main. Right, just run through some of the limitations and benefits of recording in this mode on all these three camera sensors and systems. With the OnePlus 12R and the ASUS, the limitations that you've seen in terms of being able to record while still actually being on the same clip is you can pause recording and continue and take pictures. You can't flip to the selfie. Samsung have got this part nailed down. You can switch between the ultra wide 1X, 2X, 3X, back to 1X, pause recording, continue on the same clip, take pictures, and then of course, flip to the selfie camera. Great benefit there in terms of optimization and usability. So a quick word of notice, if you do want to use the 3X dedicated zoom lens on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, you do have to drop down to full HD or HD 30 FPS. So that's 720p or 1080p at 30 FPS. This will allow you to use the dedicated 3X zoom lens that it has, but in 4K, it won't work. So just that, something to bear in mind. We're in a 3X digital mode on the OnePlus 12R and a 3X dedicated 4K 30 on the S24 Plus. We're now recording in the 4K UHC 60 frames a second video recorder mode on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, OnePlus 12R, and the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus. We're starting on the main wide sensor. Again, we'll go through the limitations shortly, but for now, let's look at the image quality when it comes to detail, sharpness, clarity, dynamic range, and stabilization, of course, with a quick run. Now it looks like there is no 4K 60 FPS option for the ultra wide on the OnePlus 12R and the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra. And you can shoot 4K 60 on the ultra wide and the dedicated 3X zoom on a Samsung, but you have to stop recording completely and then you're able to switch lenses. This is not a problem on the S24 Ultra, but it's a problem on the S24 Plus and S24 very very disappointing from Samsung. I said this before in my previous Galaxy S24 camera comparison that I did with the iPhone 15 and the Pixel 8. The Pixel 8 and the iPhone 15 do not have this problem. What's great is you can pause recording, continue on the same clip, take pictures and flip to the selfie camera. As you can see 4K60. So we're still in a 60 FPS option on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, S24+, Plus, OnePlus 12R. Again, the OnePlus 12R doesn't have a 60 FPS option at all, not ultra wide, it's limited to 30, regardless of the resolution at 1080p or 720p. So bear that in mind, we're still on the main sensor on there. And to get 60 FPS on the ultra wide, you do have to go down to FHD 1080p or HD 720p on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, which is what we're seeing right now. And of course, although you have to stop recording, change lenses, you do have 4K 60 on the ultra wide for the S24 Plus. So yeah, that's an advantage there. Yeah. 
we're back in the 4K 60 FPS mode on all of them. We're now in the 2X zoom mode on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, S24 Plus from Samsung, OnePlus 12R. We've just seen how to perform in the 2X mode. Still in the 4K 60 FPS mode. We've now gone into the 3X dedicated zoom on the S24 Plus by the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra and the OnePlus 12R are doing a digital crop in the main sensor, but still in 4K 60 FPS. And again, to be able to use the 3X dedicated zoom lens on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, you do have to drop it down to FHD 60 fps or hd 60 fps which is 1080p or 720p and that's when it will allow you to use the dedicated 3x zoom lens and not do a digital crop on the main sensor in 60 fps whereas obviously it's 4k 60 on a 3x dedicated zoom lens on the s24 plus and it's digital crop on the main sensor 4k 60 fps and oneplus 12r We are now recording in the 8K 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the Galaxy S24 Plus, the 8K 24 FPS mode on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, and 4K 30, which is the maximum in terms of resolution on the OnePlus 12R. I'm just seeing how the image quality is like, stabilization, field of view, details. Well, quick run. We're now shooting in the super steady mode on the Galaxy S24 Plus, which does this in 2.5K 1440p up to 60 FPS, and that is on the 0.6X and a 1X. There isn't a 2X mode option. There is a 2X mode on the S24 Ultra, but just not here. Um, the other cameras, such as the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra and the OnePlus 12R, doesn't have a mode like this. But just to save this video being long, we're going to do in the 1X mode and compare it with a fast, heavy run. We're now recording in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode in the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, the Galaxy S24 Plus and the OnePlus 12R. My mind just goes blank trying to remember all these long names for these smartphones, but I digress. Coming back, main wide sensor with me in the frame is the subject and just seeing how the image quality is like, how it handles it with the environment. We've now switched to the ultra wide or the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, the S24 Plus and the OnePlus 12R. Now what you can see is that with the ASUS and the Samsung you can still do the ultra wide in 4K 30. Whereas with the OnePlus 12R it is limited to just 1080p 30. So you just see the image quality difference there. I'm gonna stand close to see the ultra wide perspective. We're now still in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, the S24 Plus and the OnePlus 12R. We've now gone into their 2X digital crop mode in the main wide sensor and just seen how the image quality is like with me in the frame as a subject and the environment. We're still recording in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode in the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, S24 Plus and OnePlus 12R. We've now gone into their 3X mode and the 3X mode optically favours the S24 Plus because it does have a dedicated 3X lens compared to the others which are doing a digital crop at this current time in this recorder mode. Now what we've done in this particular mode is switch it to FHD 1080p 30fps on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra. This allows it to then finally use the 3x dedicated zoom lens it's working with rather than doing a 3x digital crop and main wide sensor in 4K30. So let's see if that helps it in another way. We're now recording in 8K 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the S24 Plus, 8K 24 FPS on the ASUS, Zenfone 11 Ultra and then up to 4K 30 on the OnePlus 12R. We're just seeing how the image quality is like at a high resolution with me in the frame as a subject with the environment. We're now in the respective video portrait mode and this is on the S24 Plus 
now on the rear camera on the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra because it is limited on the selfie and not having it. It's only on the rear camera and of course on the OnePlus 12R. Again, with the Asus, I'm impressed to see that it does allow you to do this in 4K. You've got a 4K option on the Samsung, 1080p limited on the OnePlus 12R. Now, as you can see, if we demonstrate on the Samsung right now, you can do the different blur effects as we've gone through before. And then after the effects, you can completely remove the blur while you're recording to make it look like a normal video. Go all the way up to seven, which is the maximum, and then back to five, which is the default. It doesn't look like the Asus gives you any options in terms of manipulation while you're recording, but it does give you 4K. And again, with the OnePlus 12R, it is limited to just 1080p 30. If there's any options to manipulate it, let's see. Ooh. We're still in the video portrait mode. We've now gone into their respective extended team. And with the 3X, there isn't a 2X option on the Zenfone 11 Ultra, but in the 3X, it does drop to the 1080p mode. And with this, it pretty much tells you that it's using a 3X dedicated zoom lens. This is something that you don't get on the Samsung. It does not use the 3X dedicated zoom lens in video portrait mode. It is still doing a digital pop in the main wide sensor, which is a shame. I hope Samsung actually next time allows the 3X optical zoom to be used. And obviously 2X on what we're seeing on the OnePlus 12R. We're just testing the maximum zoom in video in 4K 30, 2x, 3x, all the way up to 4x, 12x on the Samsung, 10x here, let's try and center it, it's a yellow gate, bring it to the yellow gate. So we have 10x in 4K30 for the zoom on a video on the OnePlus 12R, 4x 4K30 on the HP Zenfone 11 Ultra, and 12x 4K30 on the Galaxy S24 Plus. And back to the 1x. 1x. back to the 1x we are now recording in a 4k UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra OnePlus 12R and Galaxy S24 Plus and we're just seeing how the low light performance is on the main rear camera in 4k 30 We're gonna stop now with the Asus and the Samsung. You can go to the ultra wide in 4K 30. There's no 4K option for the ultra wide on a OnePlus 12R. We're now recording on the front facing camera on the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra, OnePlus 12R and the Galaxy S24 Plus. 
the Galaxy S24 Plus is in 4K 30, while the other two are in 1080p 30 frames a second. We're now recording in a 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode with the rear main camera on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra, the OnePlus 12R and the Galaxy S24 Plus. We've just seen how the low light performance is with the rear camera with me in the frame as the subject and with the low light environment. And again, we're just going to stick to the main white tensor. We're now in their respective video portrait mode on the ASUS Zenfone 11 Ultra the Galaxy S24 Plus and the OnePlus 12R. Now with the Zenfone and the Galaxy S24 Plus as demonstrated during the daytime, it does allow you to do this in 4K on the main rear camera. Whereas with the OnePlus 12R, it's limited to 1080p. Okay, now we've gone through the videos, let's look at the pictures and start analyzing them between the Zenfone 11 Ultra, the Galaxy S24 Plus and the OnePlus 12R. A couple of things to apologize for, I am under the weather. I'm trying to be as best as possible, so I do sound a bit nasally and unclear. Apologies for that. And also, there's just a lot of construction around me, so if you hear any background noise, I'm gonna do my best to isolate so you don't hear it. Of course, when it comes to analyzing the pictures, I'm gonna be as quick fire as possible, but do feel free to pause it so you can have a longer look if you feel the need to. Right, let's start with the daytime images with the landscape shots without me in the frame. And we're just gonna pretty much go through them. And we're starting with the furthest out in terms of the focal length, which is the ultra wide ended. This particular situation, I really like the look of the Samsung. Um, the Asus is struggling with exposure. It is, you know, a lot darker than it should in my particular opinion. Yes, trust me, this time of year in the UK is gloomy and sad and down amongst other things, which oh, trust me, I'm gonna be away for a bit. So it ain't gonna look like I'm gonna be away. I digress, but anyway, this in this particular situation, yeah, I'm taking Samsung, then OnePlus, then the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra. When we move over to the wide, the Asus 11, um, Zenfone 11 Ultra does a lot better when it comes to exposure now, but I still do prefer what I'm seeing from Samsung and OnePlus. In a lot of ways, I kind of like the more natural look of the OnePlus compared to the Samsung, which does go for a much more vibrant, saturated look. But again, it really balances out well, good detail across the board when it comes to the make wine sensor. So it's just really down to how you like the look of the image. Let's go to the 2X mode and we do have that staying very consistent. I would say that in terms of the image processing, as it's doing a central crop on the main wide tensor, Samsung is still doing a good job. Then the Asus is not bad. I just feel like the exposure could be better, but in some ways it could be a bit more realistic. Um, and then the OnePlus actually strikes a good balance in between the two. So you could actually you know, go forward. But I would say the detail processing is better at 2X with the Galaxy S24 Plus. Now, when we move over to the extended zoom range, 3X, this is where you're still getting a much better advantage on the Galaxy S24 Plus. I feel like it's just much more consistent when it comes to the camera compared to the other two. So again, not really much to analyze, I would say with Samsung in this particular situation. Now, when we're going further, there is a 5X mode. This is something that I believe we see on the OnePlus 12R. I'm not sure why they've got it. They don't have a dedicated zoom lens. I think it's just cropping in more on the main wide tensor. Personally, when it comes to this extended zoom range, anything beyond 5X, you should only be doing 10X and Samsung and you know the Asus are gonna give, give you the best results overall. Now, 10X again, super extended. In my personal opinion, for these type of phones, anything beyond 5X, if you've got a dedicated 3X zoom like what you have on the you know, Samsung and the Asus, yeah, up to 10X is where you should be going. And even then, you can't really make out the fine text on the yellow gate, so just bear that in mind. And yes, you do have the maximum extended zoom ranges, which is 30X and 30X on the Asus, 20X on the OnePlus 12R. I wouldn't recommend it for any of these. Again, we're just showcasing it for the sake of, but yeah, just none of them really do that great in my opinion. Now for the high resolution mode in JPEG, you do have the ability to do this on the Samsung and the OnePlus because there is a mode for it. There isn't a high resolution mode on the Asus, which is a shame. It's just nice to have that option. So just consider it. This is of course just on a big wide sensor, nothing else. So just have a look and see how you are when it comes to the details. Overall, I really do like the look of what I'm seeing on, you know, the 
Galaxy S24 Plus and the OnePlus 12R. Yeah, they're both great. In some ways, I kind of like the more natural look of the OnePlus 12R, but really detail is great. In these situations, I always recommend not just daytime, but ideally do it where the sun's out because the effective pixels are much smaller. Right, some front-facing camera images, selfies between the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra, Galaxy S24 Plus and the OnePlus 12R. And for me personally, it's gonna be Samsung. You know, yes, I wish the field of view was a lot better compared to what you're seeing on the Asus. The Asus's field of view is good. It's just a bit too saturated on the Asus and it reddens my skin more than I would like. Uh, the OnePlus 12R balances a lot better than the Asus, but yeah, I just like the look of the Samsung, then the OnePlus, then the Asus. But the Asus does get points for a great wide field of view. Now we'll move over to the portrait mode image. All of them do great. If we're solely judging it based on edge detection and also the blur consistency, I would say all of them are doing great. I look at them a quick glance and I have no issues. So when it comes to portrait mode, if I'm being nitpicky, maybe Samsung, but honestly, they're all fine. You can't go wrong with either in this situation. All right, let's look at the rear pictures with me in the frame as the subject and start with the ultra wide. I think just going with the same consistency as before, but in this particular situation for the ultra wide, I'm actually going to go with the OnePlus 12R, then the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus, and then the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra. I just like the look of the OnePlus in this situation, especially how it manages my skin tones really well. Uh, Samsung is great, um, but I think it just, you know, oversaturates the color of the greens. But if we're just focusing on me, yeah, you know, color accuracy on the jacket is on point. It's great, you know, but I kind of really like the look of the OnePlus 12R. Now moving over to the main white sensor, it kind of flips a little bit. I, you know, again, mind my eyes being closed, I didn't realize until after on the ACU, so bear with me, you know, make all the funds and the memes that you want. In this situation, it's a tough one. I feel like, you know, it lacks a bit of contrast on the Galaxy S24 Ultra, but the exposure is really good. Skin tones are good enough. Um, in terms of the shadow details, it does crush a bit on the OnePlus 12R, so it does look a bit dark around my beard area and whatnot. Um, the ACU Zenfone 11, Ultra is actually doing okay. Um, what would I prefer? I think I prefer the look of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus, OnePlus 12R, and Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra. Now, 2X in this particular mode, in terms of the image processing, if we're focusing on me as a subject, things stay really consistent on a Samsung. But you know what? just how the skin tones are yes you sacrifice a bit when it comes to the shadow details so it does look a bit dark underneath my beard and stuff but i like the oneplus 12r and in this situation the asus really claws it back well so just because how it doesn't manage my skin tones i'll still put it slightly below the oneplus 12r but it claws it back and it does a good job now 3x mode in this situation it's pretty much going to be samsung all the way but you know what the processing on the oneplus 12r did a lot better than i was expecting when it comes to the asus you can see a bit of sharpening and i'm not really sure why it needs to be doing that but yeah it looks good but in this situation i think samsung really takes it let's run it back and look at the high resolution mode as stated in terms of taking it in this mode ideally you want daylight and sun out as well with a human frame and a subject you do take a slight hit to dynamic range from what you're seeing on the samsung obviously you don't have this mode on the asus so i think the oneplus 12r in this situation handles it a bit better but does crush the shadows underneath my beard if you see it all right portrait mode so here we are when it comes to the portrait mode image we're going to try as always just focus more consistently on the blur detection edge detection blur consistency and quality and i have to say all of them are actually doing really good in this situation i would say that funny enough the oneplus 12r has a much more natural blur look to the image than i was expecting it kind of takes this one ever so slightly for me and then you've got the asus where it's actually doing really well all of them are doing great but I'll actually i'm kind of surprised how much i like the oneplus 12r compared to the other two now 2x mode all of them have it and in this situation i definitely like what i'm seeing from the samsung if we're again focusing on the gaps in between my arm the overall edge detection blur again i don't have that much hair to really push these when it comes to that but it's just something to consider and then you've got the asus which is doing really great in this situation and then the oneplus 12r now 3x again because there's a dedicated 3x zoom lens you do have this on the s24 plus and your 3x portrait mode on the s24 plus absolute chef's kiss looks really good loving it good stuff there samsung now we did a capturing speed test and this is quite unscientific there's two things that we do we do a running motion and a jumping motion and within that time frame we set up the phones to be on a tripod and we're just basically trying to capture as many images as possible while i'm running and seeing how many of those images are actually blurred or unblurred and yeah pretty much in this situation it's really to see how you know the capture speed has improved or performs across the board unscientific but hey this is our method of doing it
Time, baby, let's look at some low light images between the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra, Galaxy S24 Plus, and the OnePlus 12R. And if you've not been here before to see my camera comparisons, what I tend to try and do is do the nighttime images with night, night mode active first, and then with night mode active, and then with flash where it's applicable. The reason why is this the capturing speed experience is much better without night mode. So, I want to see what's the best performance when you don't do that. Night mode is great, but night mode isn't always the best because you do have to hold it still, it takes time to exposed and sometimes you get light bleed issues motion blur issues so i like to show all three instances where possible so in this particular situation the landscape images we're going without night mode first one thing you're going to see is that with the oneplus devices and the oppo devices that bbk slew of devices i don't think they really turn night mode off even though they've got like a separate night mode option or a moon icon that tells you it's on or off i feel like when you take it without night mode it's never really off so just take that into consideration whereas what you're seeing with the samsung and asus it looks like when you're taking it without night mode is really not taking it without night mode so yeah ultra wide I guess by default, the OnePlus 12R wins it, but honestly, like I said, take that with a pinch of salt. I don't think night mode is really off because when you see it with night mode, there's not really much difference. Now moving over to the main wide sensor. Again, I'm seeing this magenta hue shift on the night lights and I thought Samsung had really fixed this, but I think this was more of an issue that was fixed on the S24 Ultra, or it just might be an inconsistency with the Exynos processing compared to the Snapdragon ones. Because again, our model is using the Exynos 2400. So just take that into consideration. Uh, I really do like the look of it, apart from the color shifting around the lights. Um, the OnePlus 12R does great. Again, take that with a pinch of salt. I don't think night mode is really, really, truly off. And um, the Asus does okay. It does okay. It does good. It actually does good. Again, the detail in the grass next to the sign is a bit muddy, but you know what? It's it's worked with the best that it can. Now, 2X mode in this situation, I would say that the Samsung actually still processes well. I still don't like the magenta color shifting around the lights. Things are still good on the OnePlus 12R, but the detail on the grass from the asus really falls apart and you start to notice it a lot more and now in the 3x mode you can see that in this one the clarity really drops on all of them so again i think night mode is really going to make a difference to it which we're going to pretty much go to now running it back ultra wide with night mode active huge difference on the samsung huge difference on the asus so really just take that into consideration especially with the color processing you can see that magenta color shifting around the lights on the samsung is gone so where you can for this situation use night mode now night mode again for the main wide tensor the magenta color shifting around the street lights is back but again the image processing is, is a lot better and again one thing that you gain back on the asus is better detail on the grass and the foliage which is nice to see but again i can't tell the difference between night mode being on or off on the one plus so i don't think it's really off so just take that into account now 2x mode again much better exposure this is something that still processes really good on all of them um really improved on the samsung but again just take that into consideration a magenta light shift and then the 3x mode yeah 3x mode is a lot better on the samsung but again then the saturation of the glass really goes out the window I think Asus does a much better job in this particular situation and takes it with 3x with night mode. All right, some front facing images, selfie in low light. And in this situation, the most wide sought out performance across the board is definitely going to be from Samsung because it has less restrictions, right? Again, when you do it with night mode, you can see the difference without night mode compared to what you're seeing with night mode. So it's it's good that it gives you that option. I don't think it's really something that makes a difference on the OnePlus. It behaves the same all the way through. And then obviously you've got the front screen flash where stylistically, I think Samsung goes for more stylistic look, whereas, you know, the OnePlus really exposed as well and then portrait mode you've got portrait mode on all of them and you can see that in terms of performance the oneplus actually does really well samsung as well and the asus but then when you take into account what you can do you can do night mode and portrait mode together on the samsung this is something that you can't do under others but again like we said you know the oneplus is almost kind of always in some form of a night mode you can't do night mode on a portrait of the asus and you can't do the front screen flash and portrait mode together on the asus i think that's a bit of a slight oversight but it's something that they can add for sure you can do that on the oneplus and the samsung so great consistency across the board when it comes to that okay last set of low light images with the rear camera with me in the frame as a subject and we're pretty much going to be pushing through in terms of using a flash with this one as well and starting with the ultra 
ultra wide again by default the one plus 12 r does win it but as stated i don't think night mode really comes off when it comes to it so just take that to account main wide sensor great detail on the asus for this particular one and i really like the look of it and especially the color processing which isn't looking all that great without night mode on the s24 plus and then the one plus 12 r will start really considering it when night mode is on but it does look good so i give it some credit there so 2x mode yeah image really falls apart on the samsung without night mode um the image holds up a lot better on the one plus 12 r but again i stated i don't think it really turns off night mode so i sound like a broken record but i just want to make that clear and then 3x mode again yeah you're gonna need night mode in terms of this one and we're gonna run it back and you see that with night mode on the ultra wide yeah big difference and it's the improvement in the color processing for the s24 plus that i really like with this so definitely use it when it comes to that again one plus 12 r with or without night mode it pretty much looks the same and then the wide sensor really well improved oh god really really good on the asus especially i really like the look of the asus then the galaxy s24 plus and the one plus 12 r and then when we go into the 2x mode it's much better when it comes to the processing but i think feel like you know the asus has overdone it and washed me out a little bit so i'll go one plus 12 r s24 plus and then what we have the asus and then 3x mode really improves especially on the samsung so definitely use night mode with the 3x mode when you're using it compared to the others so i would say clarity wise the asus actually takes it so i'll give it to that in that sense now flash enabled samsung slight oversight but this is a consistent thing that we've shown when it comes to the ultra wide samsung does not allow you to use the flash and i think this is something they need to just do in a software update enabling the camera sometimes you do want an ultra wide field of view and flash when you're taking group pictures in low light uh, in this situation i would say that it's a tough one on both the asus and the OnePlus 12R, but I like the look of the Asus, even though it does generate a bit more noise. Moving over to the main wide sensor, I'll say that the flash on the Samsung is not all that powerful, but it does retain a good level of clarity and evenness and subtleness to it that maybe helps, whereas obviously it's quite overbearing on the other two. But yeah, I'll say the OnePlus strikes a good balance and then yeah i would say in some way because the stylistic look the samsung but some people would actually pick the asus just because it is really really bright so i wouldn't blame you if you did now 2x mode in this situation the image does fall apart on all of them but i would say that samsung holds up better even though the exposure isn't as high in terms of the brightness and whatnot then the asus then the one plus and then the 3x in this situation i've just got to give it to the one plus because you know it's a further distance it's working better so yeah one plus asus then samsung portrait mode now portrait mode is done here in this situation and all of them actually nailed it but you know the exposure on the zen phone is just non-existent the color processing on the s24 ultra is not really that great i'll give it to the one plus 12 on this one but again if we're judging the blur and edge detection all of them do it but it's just the exposure on the asus like i look like an unlockable character you can't see me now 2x which you've got in this situation with the 2x the portrait mode on the one plus really did struggle it just wasn't nailing it uh this actually worked well on the galaxy s24 plus and the asus and then what we had to do is we had to really just push things beyond that when we get to 3x yeah that's when samsung was struggling and then at 2x when we tried it again it was still struggling on the one plus 12r and we had to basically really come close and at that point yes it nails it but then it's so close that it becomes a headshot you can't do a body shot portrait mode at night time so just something to consider now there's a reason why i'm just showing these solo images of the s24 plus because when we go into portrait mode yeah portrait mode with night mode active it's the only device that allows you to do it you know at 1x 2x 3x you can do portrait mode with night mode put together and going further you can do portrait mode with the flash at 1x 2x and 3x so the level of flexibility here from samsung outright pretty much makes it the best all rounder here when it comes to the camera experience and that is pretty much a wrap up of the photos analysis and that is it with our definitive camera comparison between the asus zenfone 11 ultra the galaxy s24 plus and the oneplus 12r let us know your thoughts in the comment section below that's it for me ben from lover of tech if you enjoy videos like this you know exactly what to do hit the like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so you're part of team tls the tech level squad so you don't miss any future videos on the channel i hope you're all safe during this time i will catch you in the next one peace